And it will be the same starters for both sides. Blackman Jr., Newkirk, Johnson, Morgan, and Bryant for Indiana. And on the other side for Wisconsin will be Showalter, Hayes, Hap, Koenig, and Vito Brown. And Nigel Hayes, you know, remember he picked up those two early fouls, played just four minutes in that first half. I'll be interested to see if Wisconsin goes right to him to start the second half. And Hap inbounds it to Koenig, and we're underway as he gets it into the front court, and here's Nigel Hayes on the left wing, now up top for Ethan Happ. Ethan Happ swings it around there for Bronson King on the right side, inside now for Nigel Hayes, guarded by by Thomas Bryant. Hayes looks over the scene, and he puts it up with the left hand, and he gets it to go. He was just sitting there for about five seconds, didn't know what to do, and threw it up. Now here's Josh Newkirk across the timeline for Indiana, dribbles over to the right side now. Gets a screen here from James Blackman Jr. Now, here's Juwan Morgan at the top of the key. Dribbling around, getting inside on Vito Brown. Now inside the paint, turns around baseline and lays it in off the glass. Two points for Morgan. Oh, what a great move. He faked over that right shoulder, then turned left, gave Brown a little bit of an up fake, and then was able to go up and under for the layup. So Vito Brown at the top of the key. Now back to Bronson Koenig. Over right side now to Ethan Happ. Ethan Happ now dribbling middle, going on Juwan Morgan outside. Zach Showalter, left wing three, no good. It's long. Rebound Thomas Bryant with his two fouls. He brings it up for Indiana now a little bit. Hands it off for James Blackman Jr. as he crosses the timeline. Now here's Blackman Jr. Gives it back. Here's Bryant. Now here's Blackman Jr. He's going to lift left wing three, short. Rebound Thomas Bryant. Now here's Robert Johnson up top. He's going to drive left, put up with the left hand, and he gets it off the glass. And just like that, Indiana now trails by just four, 35-31. Great take by Robert Johnson. And although Ethan Happ leads the Wisconsin team in blocks, he's not necessarily a shot blocker, so Johnson went right into the chest and laid it up with the left hand. Now here's Ethan Happ, right wing, guarded by Morgan. Picks up his dribble now outside for Showalter. Into the corner now, left left corner. Here is Nigel Hayes, dribbling down now, and James Blackman Jr. has the size advantage. Bronson Koenig, left wing, three, and he got it! Bronson Koenig hit a bunch of big shots tonight. There's another one. And that's way too much space to give a great three-point shooter like Koenig. Indiana needs to close out closer on these Wisconsin guards as they go up and shoot three-pointers. Now here's Josh Newkirk running the offense for Indiana, dribbling over to the right side, now on the right wing. Gets a screen from Blackman Jr. back middle. Now here's Juwan Morgan at the top of the key, dribbling on on Zach Showalter, getting inside, spin move back middle, puts up the shot, no good off the rim, and now here's Ethan Happ with the rebound, pushes it up now for Nigel Hayes into the front court. Gets a screen up top now from Ethan Happ, now here's Vito Brown, top of the key, left wing now Zach Showalter. Showalter guarded by... Josh Newkirk, he's fouled on the drive, and that'll be an inbounds now for Wisconsin under the basket. Showalter just gave a jab step to his right, got Newkirk leaning ever so slightly, and wasn't able to recover. He put two hands on the ball handler. Referees are going to call out a foul 99% of the time. So now a sub on here is Jordan Hill coming into the game. Or excuse me, that's Demetri Trice, number zero, and Vito Brown will come out of the game. So Wisconsin going small here. They've got Hayes and Happ and the three-guard set in the backcourt. Now Showalter inside. Now here's Bronson Koenig. Nigel Hayes now at the top of the key. Guarded by Thomas Bryant. It's poked away. He gets it right back. Now in the short corner on the right side. Surveying the offense. Now here's Nigel Hayes. Puts the ball back on the deck. Outside Jordan, or excuse me, Demetri Trice. Now Bronson Koenig driving left. There's a whistle inside. And we'll see what the call is here. Looks like that's going to go on Thomas Bryant. Or excuse me, Jawan Morgan. Not sure exactly what he did there. Might have been holding away from the ball, but it'll be Wisconsin ball underneath the basket. That's Jawan Morgan's first foul. So now Koenig will inbound for Wisconsin under his own basket. Looking for somebody. Has to throw it inbounds. Zach Showalter's there near the half-court circle. He gets it. Now Nigel Hayes driving left on Bryant, and he throws it up. He can't get it to fall. Rebound half. Outside Koenig. Pump fakes a three. Now drives right. Spings back middle and brings it back out. Nigel Hayes top of the key. Hayes now. Here is Demetri Trice, left wing. Trying to get inside for Happ. He's guarded on the left block there by Jawan Morgan. Spinning back baseline. Loses it out of bounds. It'll stay here off Jawan Morgan. So the long possession for Wisconsin continues. 16 to shoot. Better defensive possession that time for Indiana. They did a much better job on the three-point shooters, particularly on Koenig. Ran him off the three-point line and made him a driver, which forced Wisconsin to set up their offense again and turn them away from the basket. So now Ethan Happ dribbling inside on Jawan Morgan. Goes up with the right hand. It's short. Rebound. Tipped around. Out of bounds. And it'll stay back with Wisconsin. The shot clock resets. So Wisconsin with 16-53. And a seven-point lead has a new 30-second shot clock. Long possession here for Wisconsin. And a couple just unfortunate bounces on these last two plays for Indiana. They've done a good job defensively. 
Wisconsin just able to deflect the balls out of bounds off of Indiana. So the inbounds is to Nigel Hayes. Now here's Bronson Koenig, right wing. Back up top now for Nigel Hayes. Dribbling the ball up top. Now Ethan Happ, right wing. Into the corner now Bronson Koenig. Dribbling back middle. Nice little pick and roll there with Happ. Into the corner now. Left left corner to three from Hayes is long. And it's rebounded by Indiana. And Robert Johnson dives into the cheerleaders and saves it. Now here's James Swackman Jr. Indiana with the ball back. Now Blackman Jr. driving right, trying to get inside, has to bring it back out, cut off by Hap. Outside now for Newkirk, now Johnson up top. Now here's Newkirk up top, 15 to shoot. Indiana trails 38-31. Newkirk now dribbling on the right side. Up top now here's James Blackman Jr. He falls, he gets it away, No, though to Josh Newkirk, who's driving baseline. It's out of bounds off of Hap's foot as he dribbled off his foot. And IU will have it under the basket with five to shoot. And we talked before the second half began about how Good a job Wisconsin did in the first half of turning Indiana out of the lane and lo- locking down their drives and, and shutting off those driving lanes. More of the same here on this possession. Great team defense from Wisconsin, preventing Indiana from getting anything going around the basket and in the paint. So it looks like Newkirk shaken up a little bit. He will be replaced by Devontae Green as Tim Garl, the team uh, physician, looks over at Newkirk. They get it inside oh, now. Here's- cut. Robert Johnson, nice cut there, as you said, right to the basket, an easy two on the inbounds. And that's how you make those driving lanes. That's how you create them. You catch the defense off guard, and Robert Johnson just got an easy layup there off a brilliant backdoor cut. So now here's Demetri Trice running the offense for Wisconsin. Dribbling up top, 20 to shoot. Guarded by James Lockman Jr. Now driving right, gets a screen from Happ. Now here's Zach Showalter up top. Ethan Happ posting up right in the middle of the paint. Now a bounce pass here in the short corner for Hayes. He swings it around for Showalter. Into the corner. Trice, three, got it. Demetri Trice wide open in the corner. Nice ball rotation there from Wisconsin. And Indiana can't keep up. They now trail 41-33. Now quickly inside. A foul inside as Devontae Green tried to get it to Thomas Bryant. A foul by Ethan Happ. And that will bring us to a timeout. So Indiana... Trailed by six at halftime. They now trail by eight. They're trying to stay in this game, shooting just 39%. We're going to hit a quick break at the media timeout. It's Wisconsin 41. It's Indiana 33 with 15, 28 to go. We'll be right back. You're listening to WIUX, your home for Hoosier sports. Indiana State behind four runs there in the top of the second. Grab a 5-1 to one lead. Now as we start the bottom of the second here, Matt Lloyd. We'll step in to start things off against Ryan Kefaber. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Hoosier's got their lone run behind Craig Didelo's solo shot to right in the first. But now they have some more work to do here as he takes a big hack at that one but comes up empty. It's 0-2. Hoosiers have a long way to crawl back, but despite the fact that this game is about 50 minutes old, we have not completed two innings. Slow pace to this one with a lot of wild pitches, a lot of walks, a lot of hits. Here's the 0-2. He tries to check his swing. Did he go? Third base umpire says no. So that'll be ball one. It's now one and two. Key Faber tried to get him to go fishing on that one. Key Faber's dealing an awful lot of soft stuff. These crafty lefties out there. (laughs) And now here's the 1-2. And that one also in the dirt misses low. It's 2-2. Slowing it down, that's 73 miles an hour. They're attractive just until you start to swing, and then you realize, maybe I shouldn't have swung it that The bottom just falls out of it. Yeah. It makes batters look terrible when it's working. And now here's the 2-2 from Key Faber. And that's a fly ball in the center field. Roselli ranging over in the left center field. He is battling the wind, and that actually be the left fielder, Kyle Moore, who ends up making the catch. Those flags are flapping out there. But nonetheless, it's one out here in the fir- er, in the second for Indiana. Possibility of some miscommunication out there, but they resolve that successfully in the end. And we can close the book on Indiana reliever Cameron Beecham. He lasted just two-thirds of an inning. He gave up four runs, three of them earned on four hits. He had one strikeout and also walked one. And now here comes Logan Sowers, maybe Indiana's best power hitter. Four home runs on the season. Hit his first home run last season against these Indiana State Sycamores. He ended up with two in that game. In the extra inning game against the Sycamores that Tony Butler ended with a walk-off. Hitting only 226 right now, though. Seems like kind of a do-or-die guy. He's going to get a lot of power numbers. Maybe not so much the singles. 
Some of my favorite hitters are the do or die guys. Makes for some, some excitement here as he can hit with some pretty, pretty far. Could get a run on one pitch, we'd take it. And here's the pitch, and that's a line drive in the right field, and that's a base hit for Logan Sauer. So as we said, no singles. There he is with a base hit in the right. A base knock is good, too. Got to get something started here. And the second hit of the night for Indiana. Sowers went with that pitch over there to the right side. And moving the line along for Jake Matheny. Matheny had some trouble behind the plate here in these first two innings. We'll see if he can redeem himself at the plate. Well, you know he'd love to produce something here. Matheny comes in batting 224, hit those two home runs in that opening weekend against Oregon State and Gonzaga out there in Arizona. Surprise ballpark, beautiful ballpark out there. And he swings right through that first pitch, it's 0-1. I just recently visited ballparks in Arizona for the first time uh, this spring, and we were over at the Diamondbacks Park. That's a great one. Which is Talking Salt State. River Fields, I think it's yeah. called. And they share it with the Rockies, and it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful spring training site. Spring training just coming to a close for many teams around baseball opening day on Monday or Sunday with most of the games on Mondays. That one's in there for strike two. It's 0-2. Apart from Christmas, there's no better time of year than spring training, baseball starting, spring's here. Yeah, Sunday and Monday should be fun. A lot of baseball as it gets underway here. And for Jake's dad, Mike, and the St. Louis Cardinals, they'll be breaking camp, and they'll open on Sunday night against the Chicago Cubs. Here's the 0-2. That one misses low as Sowers scrambles back to first. And the weather's turning baseball like here. The first games I came to here a couple of weeks ago, it was in the 30s, cold, windy. The diehards were here. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. There you Some go. Some good games, great hitting from the Hoosiers. But now we're really feeling it, feeling baseball. It's nice outside, mid-60s, probably dip into the 50s here by the end of this one. Key favor, long look in the 1-2, and it's a breaking ball, grounded foul. And we'll do 1-2 and two again. That was at 71 miles per hour. Well, let's take up, let's take some bets on when he get whether he gets under seventy or not, as the game goes on. If he really wants to slow one down, one of those slow benders. Maybe we'll see an Ephus pitch. It'd be like a Jamie Moyer pitch <laughs> out there. <laughs> Jamie Moyer loved him. Here's the one-two now from Key Faber. In there, called third strike, and Matheny will head back to the dugout with the bat on his shoulder. And now there's two outs here in the second for Indiana State and Ryan Kiefer up on the hill. That's your 81 mile an hour fastball, Josh. And really I guess after after 71, uh, it looks looks a lot different. That's what pitching is about. It's not all about speed. Change the look, change the angle, change the timing of the batter. And he really fooled Jake Matheny right there. And that'll bring up Tony Butler, hitting 288 on the season. Had four runs batted in last night, two doubles and a single. He was three for three against Evansville in the 6-3 win. And he's going to look at strike one. So Sowers over there at first after the single. And the Hoosier will try to get something going. Just two hits in this ball game. They trail 5-1. Key favor comes set. Takes a couple looks over to Sowers. Now the pitch, and he gets one across there. That's another breaking ball at 73, and it's 0-2 now on the Hoosier second baseman. As we've watched Key favor these two innings, I think he's been able to dial in control over these pitches. You can see that one had the batter fooled from the outset, buckled at the knees. And now the 0-2 pitch here from Key favor. Try to get him to fish for that one at 75, but that misses low. It's one and two. Had a pitch to waste there. So Indiana looking to keep their hot streak going. They've won five in a row. And now here's the one, two. And did that get his jersey? No, it misses just inside, though. The lights are on here at Bart Kaufman. It's getting into that twilight period. That may be playing a role, too, here in terms of visibility of the pitches. That one just missed Did inside there. Yeah, the light's just starting to take effect here. The sun 
setting here within the next hour. Now the 2-2 misses outside, and Butler has worked the count full at 3-2. and two. Is that pink camo, or is it just... It looks to be pink camo pink out there. Pink camo. For, for sorority night, I guess. I like the camo and pink combo. So you can support the military with the camo and <laughs> breast yeah. cancer with the pink. And here's the 3-2 pitch. Sauer should be going with the pitch, and he wisely does not go too early and gets back to first. It's tough with those lefties to go on first, mov first movement. The flags are flapping out there in left center field. Three and two here to Butler. And he rips one, almost takes the head off the third base coach. But that one goes foul. It's three and two. Well, that's why they wear helmets now. He's just about as close as the third baseman is, no glove. That was some pretty nimble third base coaching out there, getting out of the way of that hot shot from Butler. Got his head in the game. The Sycamores lead 5-1. Chance for Indiana to keep the line moving here. Tony Butler, 3-2 count. Runner on at first is Sowers. And here's the pitch, and that's a fly ball. That'll stay on the infield. So he takes charge of this one. Looks like that's Geisler over towards the pitcher's mound, and he makes the catch for out number three. So the Hoosiers get a run, but they strand him at first base. We're going to head to the third. It's Indiana State 5. It's Indiana 1 here on BTN+. Plus. Welcome back to Hoosier Talk. I'm Josh Easton. We're talking IU Purdue, a tough loss for Indiana last night in West Lafayette. Here to talk about that matchup is Dan Black and Pat White. Gentlemen, just a really tough matchup for IU. It was, it was a hostile environment. Dan, uh, I guess, what was your biggest takeaway from the matchup last night? Some of the big issues were, were turnovers and also foul trouble. I mean, Indiana, mostly in their front court, just got into foul trouble all night. Uh, Pat, I mean, Tim, Tim Priller had to come into the game. Deron Davis fouled out. Thomas Bryant fouled out. Uh, they were just kind of running out of options down there. It was the foul trouble for the big men. It was the turnovers and the free throw discrepancy was also pretty tough. And now going into Ohio State, Dan, uh, do, does IU have, have much of a shot in that game, you think? And it's been a tough season for the Hoosiers all around. We'll see if they can end the season on a high note at Ohio State on Saturday.